I'm Osarji, welcome back to another video. I am having so much trouble starting this video, starting this intro because I have no idea what to do because I have never done a video like this before. I, I, I don't know. Now let me take you guys back a year ago when I found a dead pit bull on my property and we had assumed that it was killed and dumped there by Steve the homeless guy that was living on my property in my forest. And it was, we'll get into that later on in today's video. Now here's the thing, two victims of Steve the clown, not me, other people that he's apparently terrorized have come out come forward um, after seeing my video and basically they wanted to talk to me and share their experience with Steve the clown now here's the thing these victims and that dog they belong to each other that dog that I buried on my property that was killed by Steve is actually Benny and it belonged to Tony and Tara now I interviewed Tony and Tara they came over to my house about a week ago I interviewed him here I set up a whole bunch of cameras and Honestly, it was probably the saddest thing I've ever done in my life. These guys went through so much trauma because of Steve the homeless guy and losing their dog Benny. And after the interview was over and after I actually edited the entire video and I showed it to them before I, you know, before I'm posting this, before you guys are seeing this, they wanted to be blurred. So I had to take another few days to sit here and re-edit this whole video and blur them, change their voices around a little bit as well. Um, these guys were, were very scared. They're really scared that Steve the Clown's gonna eventually get loose, get free, come out and go after them for being in my video and basically talking about their experiences with the homeless guy. I don't blame them. They've been through a lot of trauma. I've been through a lot of shit with this guy too. These guys are legit victims of Steve the Clown, so I don't blame them guys. Please be respectful in the comments below. I feel really bad for them. And honestly, I'm gonna respect their wishes to be blurred in this video. I really don't like posting videos with people blurred all the time because it just doesn't make for good content. But at the same time, these are people's lives and their emotions and I really do want to respect that. Now without further ado, I'm going to put in the interview with Tony and Tara. Okay sergeants, I am here with Tony and Tara and these lovely people are the owners of Benny. Now I'm not going to get into who Benny is until later on. I'm going to let them tell you about Benny and what happened with Benny and how Steve the clown, the homeless guy that terrorized me for such a long time on my property, how he affected their life in such a negative way. So I'm going to let um, Tony, just go ahead and tell us a little bit about Benny and, and what happened and how all this started. Our pit bull Benny was out in the yard and he was taken by a guy wearing a yellow trench coat. Benny was very old and sick. He couldn't really fend for himself. What was wrong with Benny? What, what do you mean like he was sick? Uh, Benny had cancer and he was actually almost 100% blunt. He couldn't even really fight off the attacker even if they, like, he wouldn't even know if they were getting him. So even though he was a pit bull, you know, people always attribute pit bulls to like tough dogs. He was, you know, he was he had a very bad chance against a person, right? Because he was blind and you said he had cancer? He had cancer and he couldn't even see. So poor guy, you know, sometimes he's able to hear, sometimes he's not. So like if he creeped up on him, you would have probably thought it was one of us picking him up and taking him Has away. he ever attacked anyone before? No, never. He's never attacked anyone before. So he wouldn't have like, like this guy that showed up, you know, Steve, like he, he didn't even try to bark at him or not like that. So it was sometime last summer, we were all sitting in the backyard posting some marshmallows, you know, having some quality family time. And we look over to the forest path and that's when you see a guy, a very tall guy actually, in yellow trench coat start walking towards us. Now, the guy came over and he started asking us for food, water and some money. Lastly, we thought it was very odd, he asked us for a charger. We look over his hand and he's holding a rocky talkie in his hand. A walk that's one of my walkie-talkies. I literally left a walkie-talkie in my forest to communicate with them. Long story short, I've been dealing with these guys for a long time, as you had seen from the videos. And I actually did a video where I left a walkie-talkie in one of the tents for him to actually come and take so I can communicate with him. Because I want these guys off my property. I don't want these guys there coming around terrorizing me. Every time I'm trying to like ride an ATV or ride a bike or something, I just, I bought this land basically to just to make content in. And ever since I did that, I discovered these guys are literally living in my forest and they've been terrorizing me ever since. So the reason for the walkie-talkie is I wanted to open up a dialogue with this guy. Mm -hmm. So he actually had my walkie-talkie. Wow, go figure. That's crazy. So let me get this straight. So this guy, he took your dog. Like, did you guys try to look for him? What happened after that? We tried so hard to look for him. We went in the backyard, outside the house, at the neighbors, and despite our best efforts, we just couldn't find him. We always wondered what happened to Benny and why the clown guy came to us, but we never got the answers we were looking for. Not until we came across your video. But the weird thing is, he kept staring at the dog very weirdly. Not like he wanted to go over and pet him, but like he was entranced by him. What do you mean like entranced? Like kind of like possessed looking at a dog? Yeah, it's like he looked at him in a way he was like trying to abduct the soul and just carry the dog without us seeing him. But... That's so weird because before we get into like 
before we get further into this, like I have found another, uh, a first, a dead dog on my property, in my house, left by the actual guy. Like he left me clues and messages and stuff in the house and that he killed the dog and he's gonna be killing more if I don't leave. He wanted me to leave my own house. So I don't know if this guy has a thing with dogs. He's just like a known serial dog killer, but it's, it's a shame. It's honestly a shame. And I'm really sorry that all this happened to you guys. We gave him everything he asked for though. And he didn't even say thank you for the things that we gave him. And he casually just walked away like we owed him something. But as he was walking away, he kept turning around looking at the dog. So he, he so you guys literally physically gave him stuff and then he just kept walking and, and looking at the dog? Didn't even thank you guys? Nothing. Nothing. It's like we owed him all these things. What an asshole. So did you guys get a look at his face? Did he have a mask on? He wasn't wearing a mask, but it was dark outside. But from what I can tell, he was an old white man. He smelled like cigarettes and something really rotten. Yep, that sounds like Steve, all right. After that happened, I was home alone because Tony was at work and I just hear Benny screaming in the backyard. So I rushed to the backyard and I saw that man that we captured just a few weeks ago, but he was wearing a clown mask. I was yelling and I screaming and then he just ran off. Tony, what did you do when you came home and you found out this guy showed up? I immediately grabbed my axe. I ran back into the forest looking for hours. And the only thing I came across was garbage that was never there. Wait, 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 garbage? Garbage. Yep, that's definitely Steve. Guys, anywhere Steve would go, he would leave garbage. You know, he's homeless. This guy doesn't believe in, like, putting things in a garbage can. He would always leave me garbage on my property, on my trails. And that's, that's literally him. That's Steve. So I'm still trying to figure out how Steve took Benny. One night, Benny was in the yard playing. And out of nowhere, Benny was gone when he went to go look for him to bring him during the night, I found a rock the size of a big softball with blood all over it. What I think happened is he plunged him to death, poor Benny, and took him from us. <laughs> what the <laughs> My god, I'm so sorry. <sighs> that, so and funny. honestly, that really explains a lot because when I found, when I found your pit bull, like literally I found him on my property, as I was showing fans, like I so I brought fans over to my to my house to show them the property and to show them what's been going on. And and literally the day that the fans showed up, um, it was Chris and Laura. And I, I was we were walking the path, and all of a sudden we find literally like a tarp, and and inside of it was like a um, like a bag or like a, a camping bag, and there was a dead dog inside, and it was a pit bull, and it didn't look like it was has been there for that long, maybe decaying for like three weeks. So the timeline is so, it fits so evenly between the time that this guy took Benny and the time I found him on my property. And it literally looked like he was bludgeoned to death. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Oh my God. That shouldn't happen to anyone. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how you guys ended up reaching out to me. It's ironic because about three weeks ago, we were sitting just scrolling through on YouTube and we came across a video that said homeless guy dressed as a clown and broke into my abandoned warehouse. We didn't think it was for real. We thought it was, I don't know, just kind of a joke, kind of one of those videos. But when we really digged into it, we stumbled upon more videos of yours and decided to reach out. So because I made these videos, you guys stumbled upon them and you realized that this same guy that was terrorizing you guys is terrorizing me. Yeah. Holy crap. I mean, I'm really happy that you guys did reach out because I, for like the longest time ever, me and my friends have been wondering like, whose dog is this? Where did it come from? You know, and, and we gave it a proper burial, which I thought was fitting for the moment. If you guys ever want to visit the dog, like, I could literally take you guys over there. Oh yes, that would be amazing actually. I really wish we were a part of the burial. We never got to say goodbye? Never. This is a tragedy and this memory will haunt us both forever. We can never shake the feeling off and till this day we just can't sleep at night. It's always going to be in our minds no matter what. <sighs> when we did finally see the video of Benny, it absolutely shocked us. We didn't know what to say, what to think. The fact that he was dumped on your property, killed. It's just it's too tragic. He won't wake me up in the morning every single day holding his leash in his mouth. I just can't. Man, I'm really sorry. But I'm, I appreciate one thing, the fact that you were able to give him a proper beer. It's the least I could do. I mean, it's someone's dead dog. Like, I didn't know it was your dead dog. Like, just, I found a dog on my property and I'm like, hey, that, it wasn't the first one too. It was the second dog that I found on my property. And I gave them both burials. The thing is, people call them dogs. But Benny was like more of a family to us. 
What would you do if you could see this guy right now? The words I could say could not describe what I would do. Tara, what about you? If I seen the clown, I don't know. I pictured it. I have, I've had so many scenarios in my head what would I would do if I've seen the clown and I just, I don't have an answer to that. Honestly, I think I would lock him in my basement. That way he can't haunt anyone else. Like, it's not right. He's taking family members away from family. I didn't expect this to get this tough, to be honest. Um, as you guys can see, these guys are really, you know, suffering from the loss of Benny. Even after all this time, I mean, it's a, Benny's like a family member to them, right? Like, it's not like, it's just a dog. And he, as he said, it's not just a dog, it's a, it's a family member. And I know a lot of you guys out there have animals and you treat them as if they're, they're your own children. Nobody should go through this pain. Nobody. With this clown, like, if you guys missed <clears throat> this whole series like this wasn't supposed to be a series this was just me buying my property and doing videos on it and stuff and then this guy shows up into my life and starts terrorizing me um but it led to a series it led to a shit ton of videos about this clown about his friend there's still his friend by the way he's still out on the loose steve's arrested by the way like i got him arrested i i finally found out what he looked like i was filming a video on my forest recently and he showed up, he attacked me, but he got away. But then my camera guy, he seen what he looked like without the mask on because he had dropped his mask and his jacket, I guess. I don't know why. And the funny thing is that that day I called the cops and I told them, hey, listen, we have a description of this clown that before we never had a description. So we couldn't call the cops and be like, yo, listen, um, old guy with white beard. We couldn't do that because we didn't have what he looked like. So. The fact that my camera guy has seen what he, look, what he looked like, we can actually call the cops now and tell them, one, two, three, this is what he looks like, can you find him? So I didn't think anything was going to come out of that. We, were, we kept continuing our video after, you know, we had the beef with him and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden the cops call me and they tell me they caught the guy fitting that description. So he was literally 15 minutes down the road at a different forest and he was attacking a woman with a dog, like actually. And I got it all on camera too, oh because when I went there to ID this guy, he was in handcuffs, but there was also a woman crying, talking to the cops. Uh, I had to blur her face because she didn't want to be on camera, but she also had a dog, a little tiny dog with her. And Steve, the clown, the guy, had blood all over his face while he was being arrested. And that's because I elbowed him in the face during the fight we had in my forest. So Steve's in jail now. We don't have to worry about him anymore, and I hope he's going to rot in there for life. Um, the thing is, is that his other accomplice that would chase after me with a flamethrower, this really big guy, he's still on the loose. Now, I don't, I, if you guys have never had any, like, interactions with him, then I, don't, I think you'll be okay. But I'm kind of worried about myself, like, is this guy going to come back to my property and attack me now that Steve's in jail? Thank you guys so much for coming out here, though. I really do appreciate it. And I know, like, nothing I can do will ever bring, you know, peace to you guys and, and, and Benny. But just know that Benny's probably, and 100% actually, in a better place now. And he, he didn't deserve to die like this, but Benny was also suffering, and I know for a fact that he's in a better place.